Good morning and welcome. I'm glad to see Pastor Gerardo back. I'm Karen Paulson. I'm standing in for Pastor uh, Burgoyans, who's going to be back next Sunday. This is Palo Alto First United Methodist Church, and I welcome all of you who are here in the flesh and those of you who are seeing us from online. Those of you who are here, if you would, sign the uh, little pad that uh, you can put your name on there so we know that you are here. I think that's it, so let us worship God together. Good morning. We are very glad to have the Reverend Karen Paulson with us this morning, leading us in worship again while Pastor Burke is on vacation. Thank you, Karen. I have a few announcements in the life of our community. On the blue insert in your bulletin, there are instructions for donating to the United Methodist Lahaina Relief Fund to help those affected by the devastating fires. This effort is being spearheaded by the California Pacific Annual Conference. The quickest way to contribute is online, and the URL is in your insert, or you can mail a check to the Cal Pacific Conference. The memorial service for Marty Creighton, a longtime member of this church who died last week, will be held Wednesday, August 30th at 11 a.m at the Jones Mortuary in East Palo Alto. English Together is a discipleship opportunity this fall to help Spanish speakers in our communities improve their English. Information sessions to find out more about this program start this week and are listed in your bulletin insert. You can also talk to discipleship chair Mike McCartney about this program and remember that you don't have to speak Spanish. Rally Day, our traditional fall kickoff and start of the Sunday school year, is coming up on September 10th. All committee chairs and group leaders are encouraged to display information about your fall programs and events and ongoing ministries. Please contact Pam Kutkowski to arrange for a table on the patio. Now, please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Welcome to worship this day. We have come to seek peace. This is the house of the Lord. In it you will find what you seek. Ask for God's help, it will be given to you. Praise be to God who loves and cares for us. Amen.
Good morning. Buenos días a los, as all the children we have today in the flesh to come forward. And we like to say hello to all the kids over there at home. Digital, hope that everybody's okay. So I invite you to come to the front. I will use this microphone because I will share something with you. There you go. Can you see this side? There you go. A little bit more. There you go. So I will tell you a story. So we went to vacation, right, David? We went to the Grand Canyon. But on the way on the Grand Canyon, we, something happened. David, what, remember what happened? We had a big monsoon. That I don't know if I pronounced correct. It's this heavy rain. Right, David? And you know what happened? We were driving, and it was that big, heavy, you know, heavy rain. And he was scared. Did you were scared, David? <laughs> a little bit. I was scared. I was driving, and then I could see nothing because the rain was so hard. So we were afraid. And I was like, God, please help me. So that's what happened on that, in, on that way to the Grand Canyon. But you know what happened? Okay, I will tell you later. But first... <laughs> I want you to see this video right there. And that's the Bible story, what happened with Jesus and the disciple when they were in big trouble. Stories of the Bible. Peter walks on water. This is Peter. hey Whoop. Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus. Whoa! and he heard all his teachings. Great crowds followed Jesus wherever he went. One day after Jesus had done a great miracle, he sent the disciples in a boat across the lake while he stayed and sent the people home. See ya. Hey, Jesus. After sending them home, Jesus went up into the hills by himself to pray. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Ah! About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. Ah! In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! Hold on there. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Hmm. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. So Jesus said, yes, come. So Peter went over the side of the boat. Whoa, you're awesome. And walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, ah! he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Jesus said, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him and said, you really are the son of God. So we were in the car. Pastor G was in the, in the wheel. <gasps> Shh, oh my gosh, it's so hot. But I had to be cool, so I was like, hmm, nothing happens. But then I said, like, God, I need to see the road. Please put me something to see. And then a big, big truck. I can see the red lights. So I was start following the big truck so I can, you know, get out of the, of the road. So I follow the light, and I say, thank you, Jesus, because I can see the light. Thank you to put the light. But then David says something very interesting, David. David said, Dad, let's pray. And I say, that's a good idea. And then we have to get out of the room, and we close our eyes, and we pray. 
And we pray, Jesus, please help us in this moment on this heavy rain. And when we pray, you know what happened? The waters go slow, and it was not a heavy rain, so I can go all the way to the Grand Canyon. So this is what happened in, in the story in real life. Sometimes we have big troubles, but we can see Jesus, and we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Look, keep the eye on my finger. Look on my finger. My finger. My finger. My finger. My finger. Okay. Just like that, we have to see Jesus all the time. And when we are in big trouble, we can always pray. Amen? Okay, let's pray then. Una mano arriba. Otra mano arriba. Big up. Dear God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for these kids. Bless him. Bless all of them. And thank you for your love and kindness. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thank you, guys. Whoa, that was fast. I think I mispronounced senior pastor's name. But I have to remember, the B comes before the O. Burke Owens, our senior pastor. Sometimes I sue the other. Let us take time for a pastoral prayer. Please join me at the end of each petition saying, hear our prayer. I'm not going to do that this time. No, thank you. <laughs> we thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayers of every heart. Those who rejoice at good news in their lives have maybe relaxed on a vacation or been excited about school or are enjoying good health. Hear our prayers. For those who mourn when the circle of life is complete and a friend or family has died, such as our brother in faith, Marty Creighton, who passed on to God on Monday, August 14th. Hear our prayers. For those who have concerns for Maui and those 114 people so far who have perished and the hundreds more who have not yet been found, hear our prayers. And for those who are lonely or unsure of their lives at this time, Hear our prayers. Thank you for hearing us in every situation of life as we all face struggles and uncertainties, sadness and joy throughout this gift of life we are given. Help us to be aware of your presence and to hear your voice, for your word is our life as we say together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
it is time to contribute our tithes and offerings to do God's work here at First United Methodist Church of Palo Alto. You may put a check or cash in the offering plate, mail a check to the church, use the church, use the Ministry One app on your phone, we have too many choices, or donate by clicking through the giving page options on our website. We are grateful for every contribution. Please join me in the offering prayer after which the ushers will come forward. Creator and architect of the universe, we want to believe that your love for us means you will go before us on life's path and clear the way, making it easy to travel, but our experience doesn't always bear that out. We know you see a bigger picture than we do. As we bring you our offerings this day, we affirm your presence with us in the pits of despair, as well as in the palaces of plenty. We give with gratitude in Christ's holy name. Amen.
please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. I'm reading from the New English Translation, the Book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. We have just heard the preaching of what we now call the Sermon on the Mount and the um, feeding of the 5,000. Then Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead, to, ahead of him to the other side while he dispersed the crowds. And after he sent the crowds away, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already far from land, was taking a beating from the waves because the wind was against it. As the night was ending, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost, and cried out with fear. But Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, order me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he became afraid. And starting to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they went up into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May God add blessings to this reading. This is part two of the beach stories that I promised. As we mentioned last week, some folks are on vacation, some people have gone to the beach, and those of us who are here, at least we get to imagine being at the beach, feeling the salt air, the sand between our toes, as we listen to Jesus telling these parables by the shore. Today's story begins with the word immediately. And that kind of jolts us away from the beach party to a turn of events. Jesus makes the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side of the sea. You remember Jesus walking out with his disciples who were in the world of distress out there on their boat. There was a storm of life raging. There was a loss of faith a brewing. And Jesus needed to get there to be with his followers. To pluck Jesus, uh, Peter out of the drink when he went under from a lack of faith. Jesus was there for them, helping them to get through a tough time, renewing their faith when times were bad. Immediately, he reached out his hand and caught him. Jesus held on to Peter, saving him from himself and his loss of faith. That's what Jesus shows us about God and also teaches us how to be with one another. When our neighbor's faith slips and is drowning, Christ comes in and through one of us. When we are suffering, Christ comes through someone else. Once I heard a former pastor at Sebastopol, Judith Stone, tell this story. 
This person who reached over the side of the Golden Gate Bridge to catch a young man who was jumping to his death. The momentum of the person who was jumping was pulling the second person who was trying to save him, precariously hanging halfway over the side. Still, he would not let go. Then a third person came just in time and held on to the second one, and all three ended up safe. The man who held on to the person who wanted to die by suicide, despite the fact that it meant he would die with him, was asked, why did you hold on? The man said, if he had let go of that young man, he would not have been able to live with himself. In such a moment, he had a sense that the other's well-being had everything to do with his own well-being. He needed to be a part of the effort to save a life in order to save himself for the rest of his life. Wow, powerful. When we take part in helping others, saving one another, we feel we have saved ourselves in the process and made the world a better place. Take a look currently at the rescue operations in Lahaina this week. While things are very bleak, the local community is helping in every possible way. Those who are suffering are getting help. Agencies such as FEMA and Red Cross and our own Methodist Cal Pacific Conference in Southern California is actively helping. You see, Lahaina United Methodist Church, a historic church on Front Street, was destroyed. You've seen photos in the overhead. We hold in our heart the people in that church, the families, the pastor, as well as the city of Lahaina and all who have suffered there. I understand at this point 111 people have died and hundreds are still missing. The image I saw on TV of adults and children standing in the ocean in the middle of the night where in the background there's fire on the land, still haunts me. And thank God, every one of those people were plucked from the sea and saved. In another example of saving people from the storms of life was a woman member of the Board of Trustees of a church back east whose job it was to make sure the private nursery school that was housed at the church paid their rent and kept their rooms clean and tidy and made sure everything was back in order for Sunday when the church Sunday school used the space. The church and nursery school needed each other's resources, but their relationship was contentious. The trustees found the grounds and rooms not really picked up. And the nursery school director felt the rooms needed painting and professional cleaning that the church was not ready to do. So back and forth, the emails would come and go. Reminders and veiled threats were flung and the trustee assigned to deal with the school was getting rather annoyed. One day late, after the parents had picked up their children at the nursery school and the trustee was just leaving the church office, she heard the director calling her over to the driveway where she always stood till all the families were off the property. Clearly, she was tired, but had a friendly greeting for the trustee. Then she mentioned some of her own hardships 
she and her family had been through. During the last year, her dad had had surgery. Her mother had been ill. Some of the families in the preschool had had their difficulties too. She shared how thankful she was for having the church as the school's location and its members being helpful to her and her family. She felt she could talk to the trustee about her troubles and her faith because, after all, it was a church. As the trustee listened and offered concern and care, there was a new relationship forming, a helping understanding. The church was a lifeline to the director of the school for more than just renting space. The nursery school gave the church a purpose, a ministry, to be Christ among families. They were both keeping one another from drowning. That is how Jesus shows us about God and also teaches us how to be with one another. Our community of faith is called, after all, the body of Christ. It's that name for a reason. We are Christ's hands and feet in this world. If anyone's going to save our neighbor or a stranger or a loved one, it's you and me. Now, maybe not heroic actions, but prayer, a handshake, a smile, a personal invitation to events that are coming, helping when we can. We are talking about saving grace through rescue, rescue work. We know an act of kindness just may make the difference to help someone get to the other shore. But let's not forget, sometimes we are Peter and our faith falters or we fall into rocky water and we need saving. We are human and life has its ebbs and flows and the ups and downs. We have times when we can do the rescuing and other times we can rest in the faith that Christ will be there for us somehow, some way. We may not have a clue, but Christ is there for us, reaching for us, calming the waters of our tears. One thing I know for certain, that we are in a faith community together. We are in this world together, and we are all in the same boat together. Let us stand and sing our final hymn.
lyrics of the hymn entitled Stand By Me says, When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rules wind and water, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, but my friends misunderstand, thou who knows all about me, stand by me. Go into your day every day, knowing Christ stands with you, lifts you, holds you, guides you, and forever loves you. Amen. Amen.